a 13-year-old boy is thrown out of the school he loves when his family can no longer afford the fees. He sneaks into the library and learns how to build a windmill to save his village from a famine. Welcome to Offrey Nation Movie. In today's video, we will be enjoying a film based on a true story, entitled The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. There will be spoilers ahead, chill out and enjoy. The film begins with a number of people harvesting their crops, picking corn and putting it in their baskets. Kids will always be kids, and they play with one other. A man suddenly puts his hands around his heart and passes away. We are then taken to a funeral where the priest states that although God decided to take John away, he will be remembered just as a tree is remembered by the fruit it produces, in John's case, that would be his brother Triwell and his son Jeremiah, who will carry on his father's work. Triwell's son William is trying to fix a radio. Triwell asks him if he fixed their neighbor's radio, but William hasn't yet, so he walks out and sees his daughter Annie. He asks Annie if she got any sleep, and she shakes her head no since she's been having bad dreams. Triwell's wife gives him a uniform and tells him to leave it as a surprise on William's bed. When William finds the uniform and dons it, he is ready to go for school. Gilbert and William cross the street together as they walk to school. Meanwhile, Annie hears her mother, Agnes, conversing with some other women about a girl whose family helped her in getting a job in the Ministry of Agriculture. Later, Agnes tells Annie that after graduating from college, she would be able to find a good job as well. As they travel via road to meet Triwell while Annie and the well-dressed man smile at each other. When the man arrives at the school and leads a group of students to class, he introduces himself as Mr. Kashigunda, the student's science teacher. When class is over, William brings his teacher a letter from his sister. In return, Kashigunda tells him that he must pay the school's fees in order to continue attending. William tries to study at night, but it is challenging because it is raining outside and there is no electricity or light in the house. The next day at school, William and Gilbert's graded tests are given, and William believes they can perform better if they find a way to study. They go to a junkyard at night to look for anything useful, and then they walk over to Gilbert's house, where a council is in session. The people are being offered money by a company representative in exchange for cutting some trees out of their fields. Treewell and a few other people are against this, but Jeremiah signs the agreement anyway since he needs the cash. Triwell and Jeremiah argue about it later at their home, he claims he needs the money, while Triwell advises him to stop gambling and save some money. Jeremiah claims that this year's heavy rain has ruined their crops and that everyone is gambling. William and Gilbert attend what appears to be the neighborhood cafeteria at night and they're listening to a sports game on the radio, but the radio cuts out, and everyone looks at William, wondering whether he can fix it. When William returns home, he asks Triwell whether he is going to pay his school's fees. Triwell replies that he will when the rain stops and the fields start producing. William removes the batteries from the radio and returns to the other kids, where he fixes the radio and finds the frequency of the game. Everyone applauds. He and Gilbert leave to go back to their houses when they see Annie and their teacher kissing. The next day, Gilbert tells William to break Kashigunda's bicycle, forcing him to walk to town. When they get close to his bike, William notices that the light in front of it receives kinetic energy from the pedals of the bike. It impresses William, but the headmaster dismisses him from the school because he failed to pay the fees. When William comes back to school the next day, he skips the morning assembly and goes right to class. When class is over, he asks the teacher about the light on his bike. The teacher explains that it is a dynamo and William asks how he can build one. However, the teacher is not an expert and advises William to check out the library. Williams claims he is not a library card holder. Kashigunda is aware that William hasn't paid his fees. William tells his teacher that a man is visiting his sister Annie in his village. He could keep that a secret since he himself is keeping one. Kashigunda receives the message and brings William to the library, where he tells the librarian that he is working with William on a science project and requests that William be allowed to conduct research at his leisure there. When the president of the country arrives in their village, the local chief speaks to crowd from the stage and says that while he would gladly support democracy, he cannot back a candidate that is ignoring the needs of the people. He continues by saying that the government should get prepared and take action against any failed harvests. The chief is taken away by the president's security, who then beats him as a kind of punishment. Triwell's harvest did not go well, and the family will not be able to support itself with the corn they have harvested. Prices have increased dramatically, and people are becoming worried. Triwell, who is upset, joins a group of protesters in going to the president to put pressure on him. Agnes urges him to stay with his family, but Triwell is frustrated and decides to go with the group. In a meeting with Annie, Kashigunda advises her to leave her village and move somewhere new. When the headmaster takes Kashigunda's place in science class and notices William, he expels him permanently. Two government trucks arrive when the population is running low on supplies, and people rush to buy wheat. 
William receives all of their money from Agnes, who tells him to go out and purchase as much grain as he can. A man breaks into Agnes' house and grabs a food basket from Annie. Right next to him, a group of other men steal all of their remaining supplies from their storage, and as the trucks come close to the people who are waiting, the goods are already gone. The people follow the truck to a warehouse where more people are buying grain, but the officials claim they can't sell any more grain today. William is able to enter the warehouse covertly as the crowd rushes there like a massive wave. He buys 15 kilograms of grain and waits inside the warehouse with a few other people. The crowd is still waiting outside the locked doors, ready to steal everything they can. The authorities claim that since they cannot stay inside forever, the doors must be opened. In order to sneak out of the area without running the risk of being robbed, William finds a sheet of metal that has been cut open. He asks other men to help him, and they kick the metal open. Triwell joins his family in their home when he returns to the village. He tells them that they can only eat one meal a day for the time being and asks them to choose which meal that will be. The family makes an effort to survive on what they have for the days ahead. Triwell tells them to try again and sow some seeds, but everyone counters that the fields are dry and no plants can grow. Triwell prays for rain, but Agnes interrupts him, saying that when they agreed to start a family, they also vowed not to pray for rain like their ancestors. William knocks on his sister's door one evening and says that he is aware that she has been meeting with teacher Kashigunda. He requests her to speak to him and explain that he needs the dynamo so that he can make rain rather than praying for it. On his way home from the fields the next day, William reflects on his thoughts. He comes home to find his parents arguing. Agnes is holding a note that Annie wrote that reads, one less mouth to feed, in her hands. Triwell asks William whether he knows anything about Annie's escape with her boyfriend, but William has no idea. They go to the school's headmaster to ask him about the teacher, but he is unable to help them. William asks if he can at least use the library, and the headmaster accepts. After reading several books on energy generation, William has an idea. He suggests to his friends that they try building a small windmill as a test to see if they can generate energy from the wind. They build the windmill and connect it to the radio. As air passes through the room, the windmill works and generates energy to turn on the radio. William goes to his father and tells him about his invention. He says he can attach a pump to the well and extract water from the wind's energy. But in order for that to work, they need to construct a sizable windmill, and he will need his father's bicycle in order to disassemble and use its components. Triwell gets angry with his son for having such foolish dreams and yells at him, telling him that going forward, he must get up early and come help him plow the ground. William returns to his friends to ask for help, but they are packing up to head north and maybe seek a better fate. William persuades them that his scheme can succeed, all they need is his father's bike. They visit Triwell, but they don't ultimately steal his bike and return empty-handed. Triwell has a conversation with Agnes, who asks him how many things she has lost since meeting him. She has lost many things since meeting him, including her parents when she moved here, the land, and now her daughter. Triwell actually listens to what she says and chooses to trust his kid and give him a chance. He hands William the bike, and William starts working. The villagers that are still there come together to help him. They construct a wooden windmill with metal parts on it, and as the wind grows stronger, the blades begin to turn. William says that the battery powering the pump takes some time to charge. As soon as the battery is charged, it starts to pull water. Everyone is happy when the water starts to flow, so they get to work digging canals to allow the water to circulate through the dry fields. Triwell tells everyone to get and plant the seeds. When William tells his parents that the librarian and a government official want to visit him and that he might be able to receive a scholarship, the movie finishes with him gazing at the windmill. We watch a brief montage of images and clips showing what happens to the family. Agnes and Trewell continue to live in their village. Annie didn't go to college, but she now has four children with Kashigunda, and William finally received a scholarship and went to college in the USA. Thanks for watching, please subscribe to our channel to get notified whenever we publish the next recap, till then take care, see you next time.